Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Scout Prepper channel, part of the Scout Tactical Network of Channels. We have a pretty neat video for you today. I'm going to be honest, I'm real pumped to bring you this because I've been spending months on it. Today we're going to do military surplus gear for emergency preparation, disaster prep, bug out, whatever you want to call it. If you're putting some gear together, I think you should consider some military surplus stuff. Now, you've already seen the Alice uh, packs, you've seen the ILBE and the Molly 2 from the Army in previous videos. You've also seen one of these pieces of gear, the modular sleep system, but some of the stuff you haven't seen. I started on my on my own little project to give you a little history of how this began. I started to build bug out bags or really emergency prepar uh, preparedness bags for my wife and kids. I had all kinds of cool gear but I knew that I needed to put some stuff together for those guys. So I thought, man, it would be really cool if I started putting together bags that were all military surplus based because number one, you save money because military surplus gear is normally a lot cheaper than some of the today's modern hiking gear. And two, you get real rugged gear. Three, if you get the same stuff, then the gear transfers from one person to another. So if they know how to use such and such bag, their own bag, then they can use such and such's bag, so and so's bag. If something on their equipment breaks, then the other person may have a replacement part or the exact same item that they can use. So that was kind of the premise behind all this. And what I didn't realize is it was going to take me about four months. So I've been putting this stuff together for month after month. I buy some on eBay as I get the money. I'll buy five or ten items. I'll, uh, I've traded some. I've uh, gone to the military surplus store. So my little daughter's in the background. She just coughed. Sorry about that. So I, I've done all this stuff. I pieced it all together to try to put together some fairly identical systems of military surplus gear, both past in the history with the Alice stuff and new. I already had the four packs, so I thought that was a great place to start. So let me show you some of the gear, and then at the end I'll kind of go through and show you each pack and what I did to it specifically, but they basically all have the same thing. All right. One thing that everybody has, uh, let me, before I start, I'm going to start with the shovel. It's not military based. It's a SOG folding shovel. And that goes into this big point, and that is not all military gear is good stuff or what I was looking for. For example, the military has a shovel that they issue their infantry, both the Marines and the Army, but I found it a little heavy. I found it a little bulky because it was the old long handle, and even if it was the trifold, it was a little heavy. I like the SOG piece better, and at $15, this is fine for me. So I didn't always use every single thing the military currently or used to issue. Some things just weren't found. For example, there is no survival kit in any of these bags because the military is not really doing much with the survival kit anymore. These guys are going from their FOB or their Ford Operating Base something like that and they're going out on their patrol or their mission for the day and they're coming back maybe they have a long range patrol and they do two three five days something like that but there's not a lot of survival gear going on and if it is issued it may be issued in smaller groups to uh, different squads of guys so the days of the big army or the whole marine corps giving everybody something are kind of gone a lot of times these different units the gear is kind of tailored for them so there is, really isn't that standard of a survival kit. I know Best Glide has a couple survival kits that have NSN numbers assigned to them or that are NATO approved, but that doesn't mean everybody gets it. With, by the same token, uh, there's no light in any of these bags because I'm just going to use the civilian lights. I like them. And I couldn't find a real good alternative that the military is issuing to their people. There's no uh, food in these bags, although I have cases of MREs. I'm probably going to put some freeze-dried stuff in here rather than military MREs because it's lighter and I can get more food in these bags. And I may or may not use these systems for my family members. Um, I, I actually may dedicate the ILBE pack to my truck uh, bag, and I may use the gear inside of these and the systems that I've built inside of, say, Kilty Red Wing, three-day packs for my family members and save these for something else, you know, maybe a, some, uh, a little cash or cache at the dearly. So, with that said, these aren't complete. These are just some of the military items that I decided to put together. Okay, I showed you the shovel. I wanted everybody to have a shovel so that they could, uh, they could dig uh, for shelter or dig for whatever if they needed to. It's important. Also, folding saw. 
I went with the SOG, folding saw, again $15 to $20 and everybody has one of those. So the first military item would be this. Alright, I haven't done this yet for you guys but you may have seen them in your lives. This is the military canteen set. And what this consists of is a one quart canteen which in World War II in Korea was uh, metal. It's, they're now plastic. It has a canteen cup with handles that fold okay and it has a stove now you're looking at this stove going man that's a ring you're correct you put this down like this you put your cup on top or what have you and you put your trioxane your gel fuel build a fire underneath whatever you want to so that this supports your cup so you can boil water or what have you so that's how this works and it stores nicely it's kind of kidney shaped the stove goes on the bottom of the cup, which you can use the whole time without interfering. And then the canteen, also kidney shaped, if you see that, or heart shaped, it goes in top of there. All this goes in a pouch that I'll show you that uh, goes on the bag. They make them both for Maldi compatible or Alice compatible. Alice was the old system, if you don't know that. Uh, <laughs> Vietnam era and on until pretty fairly recently they used the Alice system and it's literally a strap where two clips went through and hooked down the equipment. Today they use Molly where you weave the strap through the Molly or Pals webbing. Alright, both our systems are good and Molly stuff you can, like that ILBE over there, I just wanted to show you some examples that probably is not how I'm going to run that but you can put old Alice based pouches right there, see the mag pouch? You can put that on Molly gear in a pinch or what have you. It actually works fine. It just is a little bit looser and flops around. Okay. We're going with the poncho and the whoopee. Well, this is a poncho liner, but in the military everybody calls this the whoopee. These are getting hard to find, but I wanted to show you because I bought them and I'm really convinced that this is a great piece of gear. A couple of things. The military poncho it's kind of a nylon slash something coating, maybe PVC, but it doesn't feel cheesy like PVC. It's a poncho. And inside of it, you can tie in this liner so that for warmth. But nobody uses it really that way, unless I guess you're in some kind of patrol where it is cold rain. Um, for the most part, number one, this thing packs down great. It does weigh, I think, two pounds, two ounces. But this can also be a shelter. One of the greatest things about military equipment, I mentioned this when I reviewed the Molly 2 and the ILBE packs, one of the coolest parts is that it's normally pretty versatile. The military doesn't buy much that can only be used as a one-time deal or can only be used uh, for one purpose. So a lot of times your stuff's pretty versatile and the poncho really embraces that. This can be a shelter. So if you are in a situation where you can't get your tent up or you can't get your tarp up or what have you, the poncho is number one already sheltering you, but you can, with it on, literally start tying corners to branches and what have you and start building a shelter out of it. Tie up the hood in the middle and you'll have a pretty water, waterproof affair. Now, the blanket is really that, a blanket. This is super light. At about a pound and four ounces in most cases. This one's in Woodland, but I have some. I have one in ACU, a set in ACU as well for the uh, Molly 2 pack, but this is a great blanket. I've got some on this one. But when you put it down, it's real thin. I don't know if you can see that. See the thickness? Everybody talks about this always as being the greatest blanket ever, and these will keep you warm. But I will say, they're synthetic material, so they won't lose their warmth if they're wet, which is great. And actually, it's a must. I'm not carrying anything down in this system. But it is real thin. So I'm really going maybe windproof, but I'm not giving this a ton of warmth. But I think as a last ditch effort, this is way warmer than a space blanket or something like that. Although it's also not tiny like the little space blankets are. So you give up a little size and weight to a space blanket, but you gain a lot of functionality. Okay, poncho and poncho liner are a must. Now why are they getting so hard to find? The reason is the military stopped doing them. All the branches now, as far as I can tell, and I'm not an active military, I'm a police officer, but it appears that they are issuing, issuing rain suits. But from what I can see on those rain suits, they're PVC based. And they're real plasticky and they really feel cheap, but they're damn near $100 and all the Army Surplus stores are online. So I'm not liking that. If I'm going to go with rain gear, and I have some in my backpacking stuff, you saw it in the Kelty Eagle 128 review. 
if I'm going to go with the rain suit, then I'm going to buy a civilian commercial uh, a rain suit. You know, the Camp Moore Cascade 2, you can pick up for about $35, and it's nylon, breathable, super lightweight, and it packs in its own pocket. Whereas the military thing is a lot heavier, uh, packs down a lot bulkier, I'm not going with that. It's another example of it does exist in the military world, but it wasn't something that I really thought I liked. So I didn't buy it. I'm not stuck with military stuff. I'm just trying to base a system on it, a foundation of military gear. And then I can add all the stuff that I need to add later. Okay, so the poncho and poncho liner. I like the old ponchos because they're, um, they're so versatile. I told you I'd tell you the prices as I went along. These aren't set in stone, but in general, I was finding most of my ponchos in a surplus store. They're too high on eBay, but uh, for about $26, 28 bucks, and then the poncho liners, I ended up buying four from a guy on eBay, and, and they worked out to, I think, about $18 each with shipping. Total, you know, after all shipping. So, not bad. I forgot to tell you on the canteen, prices vary. I found some here and some there. So, for the complete system, which is the pouch, which is still on a pack, the canteen, the cup, and the stove, uh, I, I bought two or three of them. They were like $21.90 shipped on eBay, and then other ones... I picked up the whole thing for $10. So it just depends. And I've seen that it can actually be more. Some guys are wanting $30 and $40 for these systems. But if you do your homework, you'll find the four-piece system pretty cheap because, again, it's, uh, it's a little outdated. They're doing some different things now with some stoves and what have you. All right. Pack covers. That's what this is. This is an elastic. They call it the spare tire cover because it will cover the tire of a Jeep which of course has no longer been in service and hasn't been in service in decades in the military. So at least a couple decades. But the pack cover, which I sprayed down with some waterproofing uh, stuff that I got at Walmart that works great. It's like Scotchgard basically. But uh, this is to go over the pack. This fits on, the, on any of these, but this one is for the uh, Alice packs. Okay, this is an Alice pack here. That's an Alice pack on the far corners, the two edge ones. And it'll go over the Alice pack. This does a couple things. It keeps dirt and debris off your pack and your gear, and it also keeps the rain off your pack. So if you've got your poncho on, you can drape it over the pack for waterproofness, but then the back of your legs get wet. So you can leave your poncho normal and, in theory, put this over. And it has a million uses. It also helps to keep the dew, the dew off your pack in the morning and things like that. But poncho uh, or uh, pack covers are not easy to find anymore. You'll find a few guys on eBay with them. And I bought a couple of these, but luckily they are cheap, normally about 5 to $7. And they work great. I could not find uh, any pack covers in, in MARPAT, which is what the Marines IOBE pack is, right there, second from the right. So I went with one in tan. I could not find one in ACU, which is what the Army's Molly 2 is, the next pack over, right there. So I went with one in ACU gray. It's just the gray that's used in that camo. And it is military issue, by gosh. It has a NSN number on there, so I like it. But I couldn't find the exact camo pattern. And you don't have to be fashionable, but I didn't want something that clashes or stands out out in the woods. I wanted something that blended in. If I'm going with a military base system that's already in some type of camo, it's silly to buy some orange pack cover or something like that because then you're just standing out when you have all this gear that's pretty subdued. In my opinion, if I want to signal for help, I can do so via sounder sight. Okay, something bright, strobes, fire, smoke, whistle, strobe, you know, all these things. You can signal if you want to, but I don't want to unless, I, I don't want to be signaling if I don't want to be, you know. So I only want to signal when I want to, if that makes sense. So I like to keep everything kind of as it is. Plus, a tan pack cover doesn't, auto, and as a matter of fact, I say tan, I forget, it's actually desert, uh, the old desert woodland is what it is. The DCU from Desert Storm is what it was. And I got it for five bucks, but uh, that doesn't scream military these days because you don't see that camo much. And it's tan, so it covers up the uh, camo. If you need a more tan-based, uh, tan and brown-based system, uh, then you can blend in a little better. Gives you two colors. Same with the gray. The gray doesn't automatically scream military if you're trying to be a little more low-key, even though you have a backpack on your back. So the gray wouldn't work out great for me, okay? And the woodland, people... In the know, modern people understand that this isn't currently what's being issued. So when they see it, it's not necessarily screaming soldier, but it is in camo, so you can blend in. Okay, on to the modular sleep system. 
I've already done a whole video on this, so I'm not going to go too in-depth, but this is a sleeping bag that's actually three-in-one. As you remember, it's a black inner cold weather bag. It's an outer green tropical bag and a totally outside bivy that's tannish green on the bottom and woodland camo in this example on the top. Modular sleep systems for every system, although I'm still short too, but they're $75 to $90 depending on the condition, uh, depending on the good condition you find it in. You don't want a sleeping bag that's only a few holes or minor repairs. Forget that. You don't want a sleeping bag with holes in it, so buy the ones, spend the extra 20 bucks, and get the ones that are in good condition, or you know, very good to maybe excellent or A grade, depends on how they're rating it. But it's 10 pounds, so be aware that if you do this and you're building a system that one of your children may be carrying, you just added a lot of weight to them. But it's a sleeping bag that is three in one, so if somebody else's sleeping bag that has the same one is soaked, then the, you can split these bags apart and let somebody sleep in that one for the night. You know, one person gets the green one, one person gets the black one, one person gets the bivy, you know, whatever. So it wouldn't be an ideal situation, but because it's modular, it does allow you to split the kit, quote, quote, and help other people that don't have anything or help your guys that do. And your guys being, you know, your brother, your sister, your wife and kids, whatever, whoever's with you. Now, you ha now you're able to give other people a sleeping bag if an emergency came up and they didn't have one. So I do like the modular sleep system. By all means, that's what I'm going with on this kit. And do I have other sleeping bags? Of course. You know, I, one of the view, reviews I've shown you in the Kelty Eagle and a couple bags, I like those uh, recon sleeping bags, and I have two of them. But at $150 to $180, is that what I'm going to put in all these? No, I just can't afford it. And it's a single bag versus the modular approach, so I'm going with that. All right, next item. I didn't even know these existed. And now that I found them, I don't know how I live without them. It's really that cool. One of them's on the ground here. You're seeing it if you realize it. This is the Marine Corps. It's in Marpat. A tarp. This is a tarp. It's made out of nylon. It weighs two pounds, depending on what I see, four ounces. Some guys say two pounds, six ounces. So it's less than two and a half pounds. It's 88 by 77 by most accounts, and it's Marpat on this side and Tan on this side. There's one or two videos on eBay about this, but not a lot. Also, snaps, if you can see that, and grommets all the way around this thing. These are some little bungees that they're supposed to come with, so make sure you get them. Now, these are really cool tarps because they're lightweight, nylon, so they're not flapping around and making plasticky crackle sounds like the plastic tarps that are three dollars. They should stand up to quite a bit of abuse and they're camo and tan. So if you needed one to be tan, you could to blend into your environment. If you wanted camo, you have it. So now you don't have a bright blue or bright green or bright orange tarp out in the woods so that if you don't want to be seen, you don't have to be. You can also use it for different things. Number one, you can wrap it around yourself and there's some ring gear. Number two, you can put it over your ATV, so that covers your four-wheeler for the evening. You can cover up some packs and gear, which is what a lot of the Marines and stuff I've seen are doing. They use it at night to cover up their gear with it, even though they're not using it as a shelter. So that's good. You can also have maybe your tent or some other system, and this is your shelter. So this is your tarp for uh, your dining fly. You know, you, you got your little stove and stuff under there. It's got all your gear underneath it. It's something you sit in. Your tent is separate. Or if everybody has one, they have snaps, as I showed you, and they can snap together. So you have, uh, number one, having everybody with common gear, or at least somewhat common gear, lets everybody be familiar with it. But you can snap two of these, four of these, six of these together and try to... Uh, Try to build it and build an instantly bigger shelter that's already waterproof. The snaps overlap, so you're good to go. The cost on these is the funniest thing. You see some of these things on eBay, and the guys are like eighty dollars plus twelve dollars shipping, and you know seventy-five dollars and all that because they think they've hit gold because it's not torn up. A lot of them are shredded on eBay. Don't buy a tarp with holes in it. I shouldn't have to say that, but I'm sure somebody's going to, and then then they'll realize they've bought netting, not a tarp. Tarp's supposed to be solid. So, I found the first one that I bought. I have six of these now, but I found the first tarp in the Army Surplus store I've been hitting lately that's next to one of my off-duty jobs that I work on the weekends. 
and uh, they had it in there for $49, and I thought, man, I've hit the jackpot, so I got it, because everybody was 70 or 80 on eBay. The very next day, I look on eBay, and there's some guy out of Colorado that has 10 of them on there at $25 a piece, so I bought five more, but the prices do vary. He seems to be the cheapest I've ever seen on there. And uh, for a tarp, that's pretty good. The Camp Campmore, for example, sells a lightweight green nylon tarp at about $45 in the same size. This is 7.5 by 6.5. They sell, I think, an 8 by 7 for about $45. So at the $25 or $30 range, you're saving a few bucks, and you're getting something that's camo, and it's reversible. So it's camo or tan, depending on your environment. Also... It may or may not matter to you, but just a side note, they don't publish this much, but if you look online, you'll see that this is actually FLIR resistant. It has a coating on there where it doesn't show up to thermal. I don't know, man. Just letting you know, I don't have a ton of uses. Uh, that, that isn't a big seller for me, but it is kind of cool knowing that uh, it does block thermal imaging, so pretty neat. Okay, so I'm going to grab the packs now and kind of show you what I've got going on on the different systems, how I rigged them, and, uh, and what I wanted to show. I, ha I have on each pack a one-quart and a two-quart canteen. You saw the one-quart here that has the cook system. I also have the bigger two-quart so that everybody had two quarts of water. Now, I'll start on the large Alice, which is a big pack. I have everything I showed you. Here's the two-quart canteen right here. It's an Alice system. This is an Alice pack, a large pack. But it has this clip, which lets the canteen come in or out. And inside is a strap. You see part of it right there. There's a strap that I've crammed down in there. So that you could take this carrier off with a strap, a shoulder strap, and strap it around your waist, put it over your shoulder, and take two quarts of water with you. So pretty handy. Also, all the military canteen bags, one or two quart, have a pocket. And that holds a bottle of water purification tablets, because that is what most of the military still issues. Or they issue the Canadam tabs or something like that, but this is the old school bottle of, uh, you know, the uh, germicidal bottle. Little brown thing of uh, the tabs. So this is a good canteen. I like the top here. They call this the bio top, whatever. But it does hold this so that if you take your lid off, it doesn't fall. You see the little retainer. You couldn't lose that very easily. So I do like this two-quart canteen. Plus, the inside of this pouch is covered in a fuzz, which is kind of a wool, and they, when you wet it, it will help keep your canteen cool. So just a real old-school trick for you there. But these, I've been talking prices on everything, these vary quite a bit, but in most cases, you can find a two-quart canteen with cover and strap for around the $15 mark. The highest I've seen is $25. So... My stuff's used, says US, I didn't mind. Most of these guys ship with a used cover, used strap, and a new canteen, but even if you get an old canteen, you can wash it out, bleach it out real good, and you should be good to go. All right, also on the pack, I'm gonna flip it, is this. I've just strapped this on the bottom to keep it handy, but this is called the sleep system carrier. This is designed to hold the modular sleep system, sleeping bag. So you have your pack of gear, and on the bottom, you strap down a modular sleep system. I don't have it tied or anything, but these are pretty good at only about $18. This gives you a place to put your sleeping bag that doesn't take up the rest of the room in your pack, although the uh, large Alice is plenty big enough for this thing. Okay, I have the shovel in the front here. Everything else pretty neat uh, that you've already seen. Let me show you this pouch. This is a medic pouch. It lifts off. These are old school, man. If you look at this stuff, this is some old school army. But it's just a little pouch. And what I would do is throw an individual first aid kit or something like that in here. In the Alice world was before the IFAC, but they still issued first aid kits. You know, the military's always giving their guys medical gear. But I put this so that I could put it on the outside and have some type of medical gear available for the family members or whoever uses this system. I didn't put in a military IFAC because I didn't think that my guys would be treating severe trauma just yet. I plan on teaching them, but I'm just going to put in a civilian style kit. So I'm probably going to put in for $20 the, um, maybe the quick clot trauma pack from American Medical, Adventure Medical, or maybe their steelhead from their new Hunter series of kits. It's a $18, $20 first aid kit that goes in there with an orange pouch that would be accessible. On the other side, I've put on a 
uh, military mag pouch. This holds three AR mags. It also has side pouches for grenades. I don't have any grenades and I don't plan on giving my kids any grenades, although they would like it. So that's kind of how I rig this. The large Alice pack, just so you know, is bigger by far than the medium Alice pack, as you can imagine from the name. But one of the big differences is it has three big pouches here. As you can see in the front, three pouches across the front. It also has three pouches in the top, at the front, the top portion. The medium does not have these pouches. And then it has a little bit of webbing on the sides to put a couple pouches. Medium pack doesn't have these pouches, it just has the webbing that goes all the way across so you can put on your own stuff. Another thing on here is most of these packs when you buy them, the guy gave me Woodland brand new unissued straps from a used pack which is cool and it also has the waist belt. This is on an aluminum frame. This is as old school as it gets. So it's an external frame pack which you can take the pack off and use the frame to haul stuff. So something to see, something to think about. The Alice packs are pretty cheap where on in my case, and I've had my Alice packs for a year or two, but the uh, large is running in most guys about $40. That's straps, belt, everything. The medium about $25. I don't have a cubic inch rating on those, but they are pretty sizable. Nothing different on the medium whatsoever. First aid pouch, ammo pouch on the outside. One quart, two quart canteens on the outside and the modular sleep system carrier on the bottom. Now, I'm going to show you the Molly 2, but I just did a review. I'm sure, I hope you guys saw it. Okay. Molly 2. This is modern day. It doesn't have the Alice system. As the name implies, it has the Molly system. Now, one difference here is I put the one quart canteen. <coughs> Okay, over here in a molly pouch on the side. I put a two quart canteen right here on the other side. <laughs> and if you know your military surplus gear, you'll know that this is a rare breed indeed. The military doesn't do canteens anymore necessarily. They really do the hydration systems. So they have the, think Camelback, the bladder with the tube coming out and it goes down your pack strap and you drink out of the tube. I'm not real big on those. I don't like them very much. I like the ones and two quarts. It's easier to purify the water in them, in my opinion. You don't bust them, nothing like that. I don't want my gear getting wet. So I'm not real big on them. And I know the guys up north aren't real big on them because they freeze the tubes. Here in Texas, I really don't have that problem. This is a sustainment pouch that I also put on the outside. There's one on each side, and they hold MREs if you want to, or what have you. But anyway, same system as you've seen, but a two quart ACU carrier is not common. I kind of had to go through hell to find that, but I did find it. I've also put some mag pouches here, singles just to show you they can go on, and a modern day IFAC carrier here. It's kind of hard to see with all the camo, but there's a pouch I just put on the outside, so again, it can hold the, uh, the uh, IFAC or the first aid kit. The Molly 2 has a built in sleeping bag compartment down here so I didn't need a modular sleep system carrier I just threw it in the sleeping bag compartment and I don't have it in there right now there is hanging out up top there's that gray pack cover I was telling you about in ACU gray which is also pretty cool and a the shovel in this one I put in a Molly compatible uh, entrenching tool carrier which is standard issue today there's that ACU poncho liner, ACU poncho, which is a few more bucks, 10 more bucks or so than the woodland, but it is, does go with the system. And I have a Marpat tarp because I couldn't find an ACU. I did see a guy with an ACU on eBay, but it was 60 something dollars, so I'm not paying that when I can just get a Marpat one. Still get camo and be half the price. Okay, Molly 2. Let me show you the ILBE because I kind of did the most of the adaptations to it. ILBE. So again, the Marine Corps is using bladders, as I told you. They're not using pouches anymore with canteens. So I scored Desert Storm uh, Alice, put this up, a Desert Storm Alice single canteen, one quart, 
goes right on the side. I don't know how I'm going to run that. And it has the canteen system in there. So I just used the regular system and I found a tan carrier. No problem. The tan kind of goes with this. It's not super, super standout. And then I did a two quart Desert Storm style over here so that I have a one and a two quart just like I do on everything. Now the ILB has the option for the outside assault pack, the three day pack, which this is in no way a three day pack. It's really damn near a toiletry bag, but I did stick it on there just to show it to you guys. And I'm not gonna run this, but just to show you, I scored a Desert Storm style three mag pouch like I showed you an OD on the Alice packs, just so again, I could hold more mags. But of course, in Molly, I could put any a number of Molly capable mag pouches on this as well. Again, this is just for demonstration to show that old style Alice gear, we'll click on to, it clicks right on to uh, Molly gear. It's not the end of the world, but it's not, not quite as stout as a Molly gear would be. I did another, be able to show you guys on the top. And I don't know that I'd run this, but I put a 10 by 6 pouch that is Molly compatible, a Molly pouch on the top because this pouch has Molly, this pack has Molly on the lid. So I stuck a big pouch up here to show that you could also add something to here and kind of to contrast the difference. And you see how this pouch is really on there? It doesn't have really any play with four rows of Molly attached, yet the mag pouch does with the old Alice system. The difference is these things, you know, 15 to 20 bucks, you find these kind of things for $3. So if budget is a consideration, and as a police officer for me, it always is, then go with the old Alice style because it's just as viable. It's just not quite as current as what's being used today. Now, with that said, I want to lead into none of those packs except for the Molly 2 are being issued today. The Army does issue this. But the Marines have gone away from this and they've gone to the Philby, F-I-L-B-E, instead of just the I-L-B-E. And if you've ever found one of those on eBay, they're about 300, 350 bucks. So I don't have one. That pack is 79 to 99 with the hydration system and the assault pack. So all three, you know, one third of the price, whereas the new modern day stuff is a lot more. Is the Philby pack a great one? Of course. It's just not at surplus rates yet. Same with the modular sleep system. Get one with the ACU color that's going on right now, which is actually not quite going on right now. It used to be. And uh, you, you know, you're going to pay 200 bucks. If you get one with the multicam that's actually being issued right now in Afghanistan, um, 300, 350 bucks. So it just depends on what you want to pay. Often in military surplus gear, the camo pattern makes the price vary quite a bit. Uh, old school OD or woodland or desert DCU camo is way cheaper than digital. Is way cheaper than the, and then that, that stuff is cheaper than the current, most current issue. So I think I covered everything down here. It's all on one of those cool tarps. I hope you liked it. It's really an overview of some military gear that's out there and how you could use it towards your system because it is good, versatile, and rugged gear. Anything from shelters to sleeping and all that stuff. Now, I don't have any military-based clothing, although you can find fatigues real cheap. But I didn't really want to put my kids or my wife in military fatigues. Number one, my kids are growing all the time, so I'm just going to use some of their current or old clothes. And number two, I didn't want my family looking like soldiers, which could be bad in some type of disaster or whatever. People could think that they're there to help or that they're the enemy. So I'm not putting my family in military clothes. But it's okay to have a backpack that's camo or what have you. And I have pack covers to kind of change them up even more. Just a thought from me. Uh, water filtration systems, uh, any kind of food, the freeze-dried stuff, the medical kit that's going to go in there, uh, other tools, flashlights, all those things are fine. I'm going to add all that just like I would any bag. And you've seen my big wilderness bag in, my, in the Kelty Eagle. You've seen the... Um, the 72-hour bag, you've seen the ATV bag and the get-home bag, so you understand that I understand the need for survival kits and all the rest of the tools. This is just some of the military gear that you could add into your systems to complement what you're doing. And I really think that it's a good value because it's rugged and cheap in most cases. Okay, guys, really appreciate you watching. Today is Christmas Eve. I didn't tell you that when we started, but it's Christmas Eve 2013 here in Texas. So I wanted to get a video out for you guys. I'm going to go upload it in just a minute once I finish editing. 
Thanks, as always, for all the subscriptions. We're in month three of Scout Prepper. Let's keep it rolling. Check us out on the web at scouttactical.com, but on Facebook under the Scout Prepper page. As always, thanks for watching.